The use case description is more like a table writing, not drawing, okay? Uh, so it's another way of having a use case by uh, using a use case description. Now, uh, you need to have actually both of them, the use case and the use case description. Now, all right, uh, now the use case is basically use uh, UML to diagramming techniques. Uh, it is uh, shows or uh, visualize all the activities that can be done by the user. Uh, describe some of the main function of the system, not necessarily everything in details. Okay, so what the user does do, what the user can do, how the system will respond. But basically, you have a user, okay, and this is the use case, normal use case, okay, and you have some operation one, operation two, and so on, and operation three, and this is the other user. So this is user one, this is user two, and this one can do this operation, but this one can do these two operation and so on. So what the system can do and what each user can do in the system without any too much details, okay? Now this is uh, in the diagram way, all right? We can do it in what? In a description way, uh, using the use case description, okay? Now, in the use case description, it's actually a, a template that you need to fill, okay? So the template will include what? The name of the use case, the ID number, type, primary actor, brief description, and so on, okay? So basically it is, uh, you know, taking that use case and you write it as a description as a, in English language. And you could include the relationships okay uh, you could include the extend and include if it's there's include or there's a extend or there's a normal situation or there's a generalization you could also mention what you could mention the flow of the event okay the so steps as one will do this second will do this and so on okay and the optional one is what the time the complexity the condition and so on okay let's see how it work how we create it Okay, first of all, and now you have to what? You have to choose what? The high priority use case and create what? An overview. Not all the use cases, we create a use case description, okay? We need to create a use case description for the main, the main use case in the system, not the small one, okay? And we create an overview for this use case. So we have to decide what? The primary factor that they will use this use case and who is going to be involved in this use case on this operation either stockholder or other some interests uh, describe the use case in your words what's actually happening in the use case what a trigger um, that you want to use trigger means what trigger mean function or action or operation they will be used in this use case and you can list the operation share, the relationship that included in the use case. So instead of drawing it, you what you're gonna write it in your own word. This is what the high priority use case. And then fill the steps in the normal way, normal flow. Step one will do this, step two will do this, and so on. Ensure that the steps are not complicated or very long. So don't try it like a one paragraph, okay? Just write one sentence in one line, no more than two lines, describe what's happening, okay? And also, you have to draw, uh, write an alternatives. For example, you say uh, there's a use case called login, okay? The user, first one, the user enter his password, uh, the system will check the password, okay? If the password is correct, the user will do this and this and this. Otherwise, there's an alternative. If the password is not correct, then the system will reject the user, for example. Uh, review the use case and try to uh, try to you know make it uh, more uh, more uh, professional than uh, any others. So this is the general way how actually we draw what we we write a use case description. Uh, this is an example for a use case. This is a general form. So you write here the use case name, or make 
and all patient appointment and uh, give it an ID. The ID is an ID for this description, okay? And how is the level of this use case, okay? It is high level use case or just low level use case or moderate level use case. And you define the primary actor. Who's the primary actor? Is the patient, okay? The patient. Now, stakeholder who is involved in this one, you describe them. The old patient is the one to make change or cancel the appointment. And doctor also could be involved, but he's not the primary one. He's not the primary actor. He's just one of the stakeholder that could be involved, okay? You describe the process. This use case describe how we make an appointment, how we change it or cancel it, blah, blah, ila akhiri. So this is just a general description, what's gonna happen in this use case, okay? What's the trigger? So how does it happen? The patient call and ask for a new appointment and ask or ask to cancel or ask to change an existing appointment. So the trigger are what? A new appointment, cancel or what? Change. Similar to the things that exist in the use case, but we just write them in a word. We say the patient will call in order to make a new appointment or cancel the appointment or change the appointment. That is very simple, okay? Let's see the type is an external. So it means what? Type of the, uh, relay, the, the uh, trigger is an external, okay? Now, the relationship, okay, the old patient will have association. We need to have include, there's no include. Extend, yes. We have extend, update, patient information. We have generalization is manage appointment. So the manage appointment, like this, will have generalization to what? Cancel or change. This is said in here, okay? So this is the steps. The exact steps, normal flow. The patient, and this is provide actually steps in details, okay? So the patient contact the office regarding an appointment. The patient provide reception with his or her name or address. If the patient information has changed, then we have to execute what? Update patient information. If the patient, if the payment arranged, then has changed, uh, then execute payment change use case, okay? And then uh, the reception, ask the patient, blah, blah, just, just the normal steps, right from the description of the question or the study case, okay? If, and this is the question asked by the reception. And uh, now the subflow here, okay, is normal. This is the normal flow. Now, if it's an old patient, he will have to do all these things. But there's an alternative flow, which is what? If the patient is what? If it's a new appointment, then he's not one to change the appointment, okay? If it's a new appointment, then the patient time, ask for the time, and do some things. Uh, if you want to cancel the appointment, this is different thing. If you want to change the appointment, different thing. So we have three subflow. Three subflow. So the patient could what? Could start the appointment. You could draw, use the use the activity diagram to write the use case description. Actually, it's much better. Okay. Now there's another exceptional that. Okay. Now the um, reception will propose alternative appointment based on the availability of the appointment schedule. The patient choose one of the proposed time or decide not to make any appointment. This is another alternative. After all this process, the patient could say, no, I don't want any appointment. So this is just a general form uh, for the case use description, okay? This is shows all the component that included in the use case description. Now, this is another example. It does not contain everything. It just contains the simple one. So borrow box, give it an ID. Is it high? Yes, it's high, okay? It is an essential. Who the uh, primary actor, borrower? 
you could put student, you could put teacher, or if it's in the college, or you say borrower. Now, stockholder, we have the borrower. What is the borrower? Want to check out the box. We have the librarian, the person who what? Who ensure that you only get the book that you can. Read description, the use case describe what? Always use the use case, describe what? How books are checked out of the library. Very simple, okay? The trigger, what are the action that included in this uh, use case? We have borrow, check out. Borrow and check out, and they are all external, okay? Now, the relationship, we have association only, the borrower and the personal office and the registration office, they all have association. There's no generalization, there's no extend, there's no include. So these, you can delete them. You kind of don't have to write them. Normal flow, the borrower bring the book, normal, and the librarian ask for the ID card, okay? Then check the validity of the card, uh, if it's a student, then I uh, have to check the registration database. If it's a faculty, then the card against the database, and so on. Now, there's no subflow, only one flow. Only one flow. The subflow is what? Is empty. But there's an alternative, okay? If the I, that means if something went wrong here, so the, check the validity of the card. And then after that, what, do this or this or this. But if, if the card is not valid, the book will what, will be what, rejected. This is an alternative, okay? When you have a decision like this, you go always with the yes here. This is steps, normal steps, it with the yes, okay? But the alternative is with what, with the no. So this is the alternative for 4A. Where's 4A? This is 4. Okay, the librarian check whether the borrower has overdue book or not. If the ID card, then it will be rejected. 5A is what? The borrower check out the box. The borrower either has overdue box, fine, or both. The book request to be is rejected. Okay. Now, this is the, for example, here. This is a normal use case. Okay, we have how many actors? We have the library user. We have the supplier, and we have what? The library stuff. The library stuff. Three actors. This is the library system use case. And these are the use case. Search for article, print article, manage user, and provide catalog. Okay? This is the, when you draw the use case. How now we gonna write what? We gonna write the use case description. From this sample use case okay of course the details of doing this operation will be included in the description of the system now you draw the activity diagram okay so we have the system we have the library user we have the system the library user enter the search item okay now the system will what perform the search now if the article found, it will inform what? The user. All right, and that's the end. If the article not found, it will tell the user the article is not found. If the article found, it will display article, and the user, okay, will be informed. Okay, will be informed. So this one is actually goes, uh, supposed to be goes where? Uh, here. So you put it in this side, supposed to go right here. Okay? Supposed to go right here. So this is a merge. This is a merge, right? So if the article found, or you're gonna tell the user the article is not found and he can search again. If you open the article, the user, then that's the end. Okay? So this is the activity diagram for what? For search an article only for the first one okay search or for article uh, so we choose this one search for article all right so this is the activity diagram for it okay good now let's see this is the use case diagram. what's the name of the use case search 
for article. The same one what here. Search for each one will have a different use case description. Okay. Who's the participant? The user. Library user. Is there any external user? No. Only the user and the system. Only the user and the system. You can see that from the diagram. The system cannot be considered as a user. Okay? So, description. There's a lot of things missing. We just put the main things. All right? The use case describe how a library user search for what? Article. The main purpose of this use case is what? This activity diagram shows how the user search for article in the library system. That's it. And then what are the main trigger that what? Okay, library user find an article. Want what? To find an article. There's only one trigger, find. That's it. Okay, there's only one trigger, find an item. There's no relationship here. Not even situation, there's no generalization, no extend, no include, nothing. What's the flow? User enter the search item, which is similar to this step. User enter the search item. The system perform the search. System will display the article, and the user will open the article. Okay, this is the normal flow. All right, this is the normal flow. System search for the article. System display the article that match the term. User search for article from the given list and open it. Did they mention anything if the, the article is not found? No, because this is the normal flow without any problems. The article is there in the system and the library contain everything. But we have alternative flow. Okay, what's the alternate flow? There's no article. Okay. There's no article. What happens if there's no article? The system will inform the user okay, that there's no article and the user can go and modify the search. Hi. The system will inform the user. User can cannot find article in the list. User try more search. This is an alternative. When you have no. Alright? This is how we write the use case. So we have to write we have the use case we take one of the use case, draw the activity diagram. If you draw the activity diagram, writing the use case will be description, will be easy for you right here. You can see that it is very simple and easy to write what is the uh, okay, use case description from the activity diagram directly. After you finish, you probably need to add, you need to verify and validate the use case, okay? Uh, is the steps correct because the use case describe the flow of the activity diagram in a writing way so you have to verify the validate this use case you can uh, you can do that by what perform review of the model look at the diagram and look back at the use case see how is that is it okay or not you can also uh, have a team meet with the client and ask him to check if the process is correct or not um, you can have what you can have uh, notes to see the errors and try to fix it and so on. This is just a general procedure. To this is ensure one record event in the flow, okay, recorded of the use case description for each what action and activity in that. Make sure that what there's an event for each what for each activity on the activity diagram. That means when you draw the activity diagram, there's an event here. Make sure that there's a what? There's what? There's a recorded event, okay? For each activity or action in where? In the activity diagram. So you have to draw the activity diagram before first. All object in the activity diagram must be mentioned what in the use case description all objects all everything the actors the process the what happened and so on every object in the activity diagram must be mentioned in the use case description you cannot put something in the use in the activity diagram and do not say anything about it okay you can see that this use case this is the activity diagram 
everything here found article not found article perform search inform user display article open article enter search term all of them all of them were are included in the use case description not okay uh, the sequence should be match the activity diagram sequence in the use case diagram what is actually happening one two three four five should actually you know this is should be one this is should be two this is should be three and so on this is should be four according to the sequence in the activity diagram you see the row it you should not mention different things in the use case description one and only one description for each use case don't put more than one description all actor in the use case description must be shown in the diagram you cannot add anyone in that uh, description and it's not mentioned in the use case diagram a stakeholder listed also should be what should be shown in the diagram you have to so that means uh, you should not have any difference between the use case description and the activity diagram so both of them has to be com you know, com compatible with each other there's no difference if you think you mention the activity diagram should be mentioned in the use case description uh, even the relationship okay uh, so all diagram specific rules must be what enforced in the use case description all right so you should have everything you put in the activity diagram should be included in the use case description without any addition without any delete